So Nikki and Funny Marco's interview finally dropped on YouTube and it's already surpassed 1.1 million views in 24 hours of being released. So shout out to everybody who watched it. So of course, I'm going to talk a little bit about it. Obviously, it was super funny and um yeah it was just a change up from like Nikki's sort of normal interviewing um style however like all a lot of artists are taking this route and that's great because it's new media and it gets us to see our favorite artists and celebrities in a different way so I'm not mad at it at all but I wanted to discuss some takeaways um or new things that I learned about Nikki in this interview because that is my purpose here on earth so if you're down for that please uh like this video subscribe to the channel Turn on the post notification bell so that you guys are always updated when I post something. Funny Marco asked Nikki about like reading publications and re-watching her interviews and stuff like that. And one of the themes, the strong themes in this era of Pink Friday 2 is that Nikki is finally back in her bag. She's back comfortable. See, Nikki seems like the person who does not review her old work, cannot listen to her own old music, cannot listen to her old interviews and even watch back her old interviews. And she is expressing these days that she knew she was back in her bag and back in a safe space of creating when she was able to re-listen to her old music as well as uh, uh, we re-watching old interviews. So anyway, um, on this Vogue article, you know, she talked about um, not reading the article because she really liked the writer of the article. And she said, if I saw something that I didn't like, it was going to taint my image and make me not like him. And so she says, I rarely watch things back, but recently I've been watching stuff I did six, seven, five years ago. So she says, you know, this interview is fun. So I'll rewatch this. Then he asks her, what is the proper way to um, do Instagram live? Which of course, Nikki doesn't know. She's like, I'm winging it for most of the time. I don't know, which we are, we're going to talk about in a separate video one day um she says pink friday 2 is the only album that she can listen to she liked even though like the pink print is like the fan base's favorite album by nikki she says i liked a lot of the songs on the pink print but she can never listen to it from top to bottom because certain things bother me that i have been trying to master and she thinks that she did it on pink friday 2 i thought that was very interesting because i too like a lot of songs on the pink print but it's it's a very hard album to listen to from top to bottom because i call it an emotional roller coaster which I think is why we regard it so close and safely in our hearts she says she loves Pink Friday too because it gets to the point very quickly and I want to know what you guys take on this what do you guys think is the overall message of Pink Friday too if somebody like was struggling or was trying to find how this album is cohesive what story does it tell and I want you to comment that with all of the songs you know take that into consideration when you comment she talked about not knowing like some songs are hits and uh that not knowing that some songs are hits and then um knowing like first is knowing right she knew that super freaky girl was going to be a hit um but she did not know that like other songs were going to hit so quickly so she says some things are pretty obvious i didn't know it was going to be the first song to debut number one after 25 years for a female rapper certain songs um that felt and sounded like a hit certain songs i didn't plan on being a hit then of course she addresses the features on her album and she's like my albums are very personal that's why her features are so specific if i couldn't have a certain person on a song then hey you know and then she talked about the cowgirl situation once again a lot of people um are once again speculating that she could be talking about doja cat i believe so as well because like what else is there to believe <laughs> you know so she recorded the set back the verse and then the person hit me up saying i'm in a different era and then after th had their people hit her again and then you know took back the verse and stuff like that because uh, the artist doesn't think that Nikki likes her so Nikki's like I'm just pleased and grateful that my fans are loving the music okay so he also asked her do you like Rush Hour versus Bad Boys which one so Nikki says Rush Hour is staying she says uh it's her it's her style of comedy and Jackie Chan and Chris Tucker holds like a special place in her heart I have to agree loved Rush Hour growing up I think my favorite is Rush Hour too what do y'all think Rush Hour versus Bad Boys Nikki says she has an air mattress on her jet when she was uh, told to pick between an air mattress or a waterbed. She likes Fruit Loops 
and she prefers Captain Crunch and she can make Kool-Aid. Funny Marco's top Nikki songs are Barbie Dreams, Good Form, My Life, Beat Beat, Pills and Potions, Put You in a Room, Only, Want Some More, and Feeling Myself. I may have missed one or two, so let me know if I did. So I thought this was interesting. He said, if you send someone a song to feature on, when should you have it back? Nikki says, in regular times, about a week, but then the features that she had on her album she needed it back within two to three days he asked her what gives you anxiety nikki talks about traveling on planes or leaving her son and yeah that was most uh the things that i found out that were new that i didn't know before so um that is my take on the funny marco interview i might watch it again it was only 45 minutes but i also got some things to say about the joe budden interview when y'all may may not like that so hey if you're here for that conversation please like this video subscribe and turn on, on the notification bell so that you get notified when the other video drops